Do you know who this is? Desperate Dan's a beloved hero of the comic strip, The Dandy. He lived in Wild West Cactusville, but he was born in Dundee. What you and most people walking past here today probably won't realise is how much that comic strip mimicked reality. Because in this video, I'm going to tell you how Dundee built the Wild West in a way you probably wouldn't imagine. So if you're interested in the people, places and events in Scottish history, then click the subscribe button at the bottom right of the screen and ring the notification bell to be told when I upload new videos. In the meantime, let me tell you a story. Marketing people have given Dundee the snappy title of the City of Discovery. Everyday folks like me know it as the city of jam, jute and journalism. But hidden inside both these titles is a truth that most folks miss. And that's where we start on our story of discovery. You see, there's a reason that Dundee was the ideal place to build Captain Scott's polar exploring ship. Dundee was a whaling town. So of course, it built and maintained ships for the whaling industry. It was a trading port as well though. And as the nickname suggests, jute products were a huge part of that trade. Tent canvas, tarpaulins, gun covers, wagon covers, sandbags. Just the kind of jute products that were in high demand in wartime. So Dundee jute businesses made great profits selling to both sides during the American Civil War. The money rolled in. Of course, when that war came to an end, you had a dollar depressed in value with a pound and wealthy Dundee businessmen were cash. I smell an opportunity. This is Liff Road in Loch Ee. In 1845, when Robert Fleming was born here, there were nothing but unhealthy slum dwellings. Five of his siblings died of diphtheria. But from these humble beginnings, Robert would go on to be known as a giant of investment trusts in the global finance business. His name continued in the world of finance until 2020, when the bank that bore it was sold to Chase Manhattan for $7.7 .7 billion. But it started when the poor but clever Robert Fleming won a mathematical bursary to the ever so posh Dundee High School. He got a job as an office boy in a local textile company and then at 21 he was employed as a bookkeeper with a textile exporter. Four years later the owner sent Robert to represent the company in the US and within three years Robert was back in Dundee setting up the Scottish American Investment Trust. Look, this isn't an investment in finance channel, but a quick summary. In the late 19th century, people were looking for ways to get better investment returns than you'd get for a bank or a blue chip British based investment of the day. One solution was to invest in loans to foreign governments and British colonies who were building up their infrastructure, railways and all that kind of thing. Higher interest rates meant you got a better return. It was also more likely to go tits up. Now, if you were very wealthy, you could afford to diversify the risk by owning holdings in several different loan stocks in these various different foreign or colonial governments. But not everyone was very wealthy. 1868 saw a revolution when some bright sparks in London set up a company that invested in foreign debt. They called it the Foreign and Colonial Government Trust. The investment trust had been born. Buying shares in this company meant that even if you weren't super rich, 
you could have the same diversified portfolio as a mega wealthy TOF. Now back from the US, our Robert Fleming was the next to take up this idea with his Scottish American Investment Trust. It led to an investment trust that, I suppose, after mergers and renaming, still exists today. It's been headquartered along there in Panmuir Street and in offices in Reform Street across the road. So Dundee is really the city of jam, jute, journalism, whaling and financial services. But to find out what happened next, we need to go to America. This is downtown Portland, Oregon, making this the most expensive video I've ever made to date. But if you want to help support the channel and have a right good laugh along the way, then here's an idea. I've just finished touring my show Stories of Scotland over Australia, New Zealand, Scotland and Canada. If I didn't get to your town, then don't worry. I've recorded the live show in my own hometown of Perth. Now, I'm going to look for a platform to sell the videos so that anyone, anywhere, can watch the hour and a half of history and comedy. In the meantime, anyone whose Patreon membership a malt level or more gets it automatically, along with three previous live shows and loads of other stuff as well. Once I've figured out how to make the show available to the public for a fee and to blended level Patreon members at a cheaper price, then I'll let you know. In the meantime, if you're already a malt level member or you want to sign up as a Patreon malt level member, then all you need to do is click the link top right or the link in the description to get it now. On May the 10th, 1869, America's transcontinental railroad opened, which allowed folks to travel from America's east to west coast. The Oregon Trail had been a torturous journey in covered wagons with all the dangers inherent in that. Now, you could take a train to Sacramento, then sail up the Pacific coast. Oregon and Washington were ripe for migration, development and economic explosion as well as trams. And much of the money came from Dundee. The ability to cross the continent combined with the telegraph cable that had just been laid across the Atlantic meant for the first time it was realistic to do business in the northwest of America. There were wooded forests, rivers full of salmon and gold had been discovered. All that was needed was the people and capital to exploit the wealth of the land they'd never known. On the 7th of October 1873, several leading Dundee businessmen met to set up a company lending money to farmers and the Oregon and Washington Trust was born. Three years later, the Dundee Mortgage and Investment Trust was set up to invest across wider America with local boards in Chicago and Minneapolis. Now this is an old building in North American terms. The 20th of November 1876 saw the first ordinary meeting of the Oregon and Washington Mortgage Savings Bank Limited. The meeting was of course held in Dundee. The board was in Dundee it was a Dundee business, but here at 124 Southwest First Avenue was the Oregon branch headquarters. Today it's a hairdresser's. Other companies were set up. The Dundee Land Investment Company piggybanked on the earlier Dundee Mortgage and Investment Company to invest in land in Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, Texas, Kansas and Nebraska. Oh, sorry, did I forget to mention South Carolina and California? Did you ever watch the 1956 western called The Searchers? 
John Wayne plays the character Ethan Edwards, who doggedly and relentlessly tracks the Comanches who kidnapped his niece. He does so long after normal men would have given up in an epic adventure with all sorts of attitudes that we would be uncomfortable with today. If you watch the film, you probably didn't realise that it was based on a real cattleman, scout and Texas ranger called Charles Goodnight. And you certainly wouldn't have known that his ranch that you saw depicted was mortgaged by a company in Dundee. Desperate Dan's comic strip was closer to reality than you might think. Texas Land and Cattle Company, the Matador Land and Cattle Company, the Hansford Land and Cattle Company, all established by businessmen in Dundee. But Texas, there's a problem. Concerned at the impact of foreign investors, the state legislature brought forth legislation restricting foreign companies from doing business in Texas unless they operated similar companies in their home country. That's what caused a number of these businesses who, let's be honest, were often just different store frontages for the same group of Dundee investors to consolidate into Alliance Trust company. Alliance Trust is still in existence to this day in Dundee, but the men who established it made a difference across an ocean. The town that I'm walking through now is 25 miles southwest of Portland, Oregon, but somehow I reckon the money that developed the land around here came from far closer to my home. Why did I say that? because this town is also called Dundee. Unlike our Dundee, this is wine country. All around this town there are vineyards and wineries. It feels like just about every street in the town has a tasting room or one vineyard or another. Well, it would be rude not to. Our Dundee is a town of jam, jute and journalism. No offence my Kogi friends, but I'll be honest, I kind of like what this Dundee has to offer. Now this isn't the only part of America influenced by Scots. If you'd like to know more about Scots in America, then I've got a fantastic video coming up on screen now. You really should watch it. Support the channel by clicking top right to become a Patreon member or buy me a coffee in the description below. In the meantime, slanch.